Wrong day to go to one of the highest points in Paris because it's extremely windy today. But we're here at the Sacre Coeur, a giant Roman Catholic church. Look. Now we're inside the basilica, and there aren't many people here. Probably because it's not the weekend when it's mostly used. Now we're outside Musée Rodin, where the thinker is, but sadly I couldn't get in for free, so Sophia went in on her own. And now we're in the neighborhood Gambetta, on the way to have lunch with my former host parents. Being here brings back so many memories. I didn't take any videos because I was so excited to see them again, but we did take pictures together. First, here's our picture together back in 2017 before I went back home to the US. And here's a picture of us together again, three years later. Not much has changed after a few years. Aren't they cute? And after lunch, my host mom Patricia and my host dad Philippe and I went for coffee at a cafe nearby. Can you guess where we are now? Here's a hint. It's one of the most popular places in Paris, and people sometimes get the name mixed up with another important building. If you guess the Louvre, then you're right. The Louvre is sometimes confused for the Louvre Pyramid, which is what this is because the Louvre itself is the museum. And inside the Louvre Museum is the famous Mona Lisa where everyone crowds to try and take pictures even though there are other really amazing paintings like this one right in front of it. The hallway leading to the Mona Lisa also boasts a lot of gorgeous paintings. beautiful paintings Patricia told me to check out this room because the painter Pierre Solages was celebrating his 100th birthday and the Louvre dedicated a room to his famous collection where he paints a multitude of depths in the color black What's unique about this style is how you can see the art differently depending on the light that's reflected onto the painting. The golden hallway with spectacular designs all around the room, you'll be amazed at every detail that goes into this room. Here's a really sparkly crown, fit for anyone who's royalty.
different elegant jewelry made with rubies and emeralds. The Wing Victory of Samothras, also called the Nike of Samothras. It's hard to miss this sculpture since it's right in front of you on the grand display before you go up the stairs leading to other parts of the Louvre Museum. Renaissance paintings are one of my favorite paintings to admire. The Louvre Museum was having a special exhibition on Islamic art in this quaint dark room. Here's the view from under the beautiful Louvre Pyramid. Later that night, I went to see the Eiffel Tower light up, but it was raining a lot and I was drenched while recording this. But I wanted to get a nice video of the Eiffel Tower sparkling for my mom, which she'll probably say, why did I wait in the pouring rain for it? And to her, I say, this is why. The Eiffel Tower lights up for 5 minutes every hour on the hour after sunset, so you'll have a lot of times to see the Eiffel Tower light up. Similar to Madrid, there are very few metros that go above ground in Paris, but the ones that do give great views of Paris from another angle. Here's the tip if you're in Paris. For a great metro picture with the Eiffel Tower as a background, take the Line 6 and get ready for the picture if you're approaching the metro stops Passy or Ber Hakim. Now we're at the most visited cemetery in the world, the famous Père Lachaise Cemetery. The Père Lachaise Cemetery has been in many pop culture like the Fantastic Beast movie and Amelie. Some notable people who are buried here are Polish composer Frederick Chopin, Irish poet Oscar Wilde, and American singer slash songwriter Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison's tombstone was fenced off, but you can see people leave a lot of flowers for him, even to this day. And the same goes for Chopin. One of my favorite places to visit in Paris, but it's under construction from when it suffered from a fire last year. Even though you can't go close to it, the Notre Dame still looks amazing from afar. This wall tells the history of the Notre Dame, including when people witnessed the burning of it. Picture showing people watching as the Notre Dame burned. A few minutes from the Notre Dame is the Sainte Chapelle. Famous for its Gothic architecture and stained glass, the Sainte Chapelle is an awe inspiring piece of construction, especially the upstairs interior. And the downstairs is just as beautiful. Heading upstairs. I was pretty excited to see this because when I was here last time, I wasn't able to see it. And I don't know why, because it was so close by.
The video doesn't do much justice, but you can still see how stunning the stained glass windows are with all the colors. And on a partly sunny day like today, you get different lighting. Back outside in the city, and we're in the Latin quarters where the Pantheon is. This arrondissement is one of the most expensive to live in, but for good reason. There's a park nearby, and you're a there's also this fancy law school and a public library right next to the Pantheon. Now we're having escargot, but we're in a hurry because we have to catch our flight. Now boarding for Madrid. Our flight was originally set for in the afternoon, but Iberia moved our flight to later in the evening, which we didn't mind, but the cool thing was we got put into first class for free. And I've never been in first class, so I'm excited to experience it. Showing everything in first class, first we have these cool folding headrests. Then, we have this full course menu. A lot of leg space. And this warm fleece blanket. Making this one for first class, but having a little cigar, cigar later. Ready for takeoff. The view of the Eiffel Tower at night was so magical from the plane. Here's some of the food we were able to have. An unlimited champagne. That's France vlog number two. Thank you for watching.